All right, let's uh, take you back to Sierra Leone where elections have rounded off and uh, we hear that tallying is ongoing already. Well, joining us is uh, Austin Aigbe, an international election observer. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Austin. So good to see you. Uh, well, I mean, give us a sense of what you have observed so far, pre-election, the election itself, uh, the conduct, and of course, uh, what's going on presently after the elections. Okay, thanks, and good to see you, and um, thanks, everyone. So the pre-election seco, um, of course, before the June 24th elections, had a bit of issues. I mean, the opposition political party, uh, the APC, had raised a number of concerns, among others, including the, the claim that the Electoral Commission hadn't given them the complete uh, voter register and a number of other issues that they were not comfortable with the application being proposed to use for the election. The, uh, the Electoral Commission has introduced an app where results can quickly move from voting station up to the National Coalition Center, something that looked like an IRF or an IRF platform, but it's not going to be visible to, I mean, it's not going to be available to the public. It will just be um, straight to the National Coalition uh, Center with the hope of protecting the electoral, uh, to making the electoral process a bit faster than they had in 2018 elections. And many other issues that were raised. And the, the opposition party had claimed that every effort to make, to resolve all of those impacts has proved abortive. Among others, too, was that um, many voters who claim to have issues with their voter card were still yet to be, um, to be resolved. That was about five days to the election. So that, those were on the table. And following that concern, there was a peace deal, a peace meeting that took place. And the, the Electoral Commission did respond to the opposition political party, the APC, trying to resolve all of those questions and uh, uh, issues that were brought to the table. Among others, uh, the issue of voter register, the commission had said that th there were reasons why the complete details of the voter cannot be released because some of the details on the voter register will serve as code to be able to, for voters to vote without a card. So in this country, you can actually vote without a voter's card, provided you are a registered voter. You are a registered voter. What you do is to go to the polling unit on the on election day with another identifier, another uh, no recognized ID card. You go to the polling unit, show the ID card that your face is actually the one on the ID card, and it bears your name. So that way, they, they will interrogate the voter asking certain questions that what's your name? I mean, what, where's, what's your address? What's your mother's name? What, what's your date of birth? And so those are like codes. And the commission is saying if they release those, the possibility are that people may end up going to engage in, in, in duplication, which may sabotage the electoral process. Again, all of those were resolved. And now we are down to post-election. As as on, on, maybe unusual with the country where by now there should have been some form of eruption of violence post-election. But till date, till now, every, we are look calm. But because of the possibility that there could be violence, there's really ten, the tension is down as we speak. Okay. Right. Thank, thank you, Austin. Uh, now, uh, well, this is the fifth uh, election uh, since the country had its civil war in 2002, Austin. And they are right in the middle of uh, unemployment and high inflation. Bill seems to be getting the lead over Kamara. If he gets to win, uh, it looks like he already has his job cut out for him. What would the citizens be looking out for in the first few days uh, after his victory if it does win? So there was an election in 2012. There was an election in 2018. This is, this is 2023 election. This is not the first time after the Civil War, just so quickly. Maybe I didn't hear you clearly. Um, as of now, I wouldn't, we can't be talking about somebody winning uh, or maybe the opposition winning because it will be premature because of the rules governing electoral systems. Uh, no one has the right to assume that someone will win an election. But if any of them eventually wins the election, um, as you just um, uh, read in the introductory commentaries, um, 60% of the vote that is out, 60%. Uh, 
and the incumbent president is already in about 55 percent, having a 55 percent of that total vote. As also said, uh, you need 55 percent of the total vote to be declared president. But there are permutations that there won't be a runoff. Hopefully, one of the candidates will secure 55 percent of the total vote cast. If any of the candidates wins this election, the first thing to, to quickly do, which of course um, the, is part of the, 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 the topmost on the agenda, is the economy. Um, many people feel that's the way to go. You quickly deal with the economy, um, whether it's the APC, whether it's the ruling party, they must find a way of addressing the economy. As we speak, the, the exchange rate to the dollar has dropped. Uh, before now, a week, a week ago, it was as high as uh, two, 228 per leon. Uh, just also states that there was a deep devaluation of the currency. Uh, the currency, we, we used to hear millions, millions and millions, but now it's just uh, what used to be 10,000 is actually now 10. So uh, just like what happened in Ghana a few years ago, they've removed their zero, zero and make it be. So, but things had not dropped. The PPP, the purchasing power parity, hadn't been upgraded. So there's still a lot of uh, economic concern, which I think um, either, of the, either of the Canadian and win, we want to deal with as quickly as possible. We'll let you go. W would you say from your observation that uh, democracy is deepening in uh, Sierra Leone? I mean, having heard uh, from the president say, let, let me quote what the president, uh, Mohamed uh, Kome, uh, actually, no, that's the electoral uh, umpire, of course, said yesterday we had a Saful election, meaning, of course, a peaceful, uh, relaxed uh, election. Is that a deepening of democracy in Sierra Leone, and could you say the same uh, for the West Africa sub-region? Yes, democracy, people have also argued that we must find a way of doing our own local democracy, where local Christy or something like that. But that we must look at our own cultural, traditional, and all put together. But what is unique about Sierra Leone is that they're, they're, what, they, what they classify as parliament is very inclusive. I'm sure you are aware that um, the election, I mean, before the election, there, there, was, there was a GWI a Act, the Gender Equality and Women Empowerment Act passed in 20, 22 December. That is inclusion. What is democracy? Democracy is inclusivity. So I think that democracy is deepening in, in Sierra Leone. Beyond the GWI Act, there is a, the, the, rep, the kind of representation. You have paramount chief, traditional institution represented in parliament. That is democracy. That is some form of localization of the democratic tenets. And I think that's very, very, very unique in their way of, in their system. They're not just having people elected uh, who are more of civil authority, but the traditional institution are part of a democratic system. And it's interesting, actually, to note that there was vehicular, <laughs> you know, movement, uh, you know, in spite of the elections. Uh, thank you so thank much. You, yes. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Austin Aigbe. Thank you very much.